Hey guys, welcome back for another Dokkan Battle video. I was actually going to release my LR Vegito versus LR Gogeta uh, video today, but I figured it's probably a little bit more important right now to get out the beginner pack video. So this is the beginner pack for July 4th, 2018 uh, guide, or at least uh, an idea, try to help you get an idea of which card you should select. Now we have a whole bunch of different options here a lot of these units are really good and all, all the first thing i'm going to say before i start doing my review because everything's going to be different and i don't want to have a whole bunch of people yelling oh you should have said this you should have said that um it really comes down to uh what cards do you have do you have someone 100 percent obviously if you have someone 100 percent it don't don't select them you know um if you don't have someone 100 100 percent and you want to if you actually like the card go for them go for the cards that you like if you're looking for the most optimal well it's kind of difficult to say what to choose especially if you don't have all the cards here uh, i'm gonna let, let, let's just go into it so the beginner pack ten dollars you get a whole bunch of cool items 15 dragon stones and a choice of all these different units um that includes the super saiyan 3 agility goku that is the easy a the intelligent super janemba the kid boo perfect cell frieza the og leaders uh then the super saiyan goku gohan and goten from the broly movies now, um, all those units are available for selection. Now, before I go on, I just want to say, and this is, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, some of you may not like this. Um, I don't know how many of you actually would not like this, but I was going to say it. I don't think, do not select this Kid Boo. He's really good, especially when he Doken Awakens, um, for support. Um, attack and defense plus 50% for all allies when HP is 80% or above. Now, he can be a very good unit if you're looking to get the max damage the problem is your hp has to be above 80 percent and that is definitely not very viable when playing the game especially on um, actual events it's cool if you're going up in story mode or if you're just looking for those high numbers just for fun that's definitely awesome but honestly when it comes to usefulness in game it, it doesn't it, it really is, isn't that viable uh, it's cool again but i don't think you should work, well, ever even think about spending your stones on him or using your ticket on him at all um, he's going to be number one. The, no, the next ones are going to be the, the, the Kamehameha Super Saiyan Goku, the Gohan, and the Goten from the Broly movies. Now, the reason is because even though that they get an Extreme Z Awakening, they, they don't really need it. You don't, and I don't know how many people who actually use them. They all keep Supreme Damage, um, so it's not even like, like they're even more powerful. Uh, they get basic buffs, attack and defense plus 80% for the Goku, attack plus 90% for the Gohan, which is normal, and defense plus 40% when performing a super attack, which is cool, makes him a little bit more viable. Um, he, is a, he is definitely an A-tier unit for a mono agility team, and I guess he could be an A-tier for a hybrid Saiyan team. And the same thing for this Goten, but Goten's order is the key orb manipulator. I mean, he has attack and defense plus 70% when he gets his Extreme Z Awakening, but still, uh, I don't think that these guys are worth it at all. Don't waste your time. Don't even think about them if you're looking for the most optimal picks. Um, obviously, with that, that being said, if these are the only guys that you that you don't have, uh, it's really difficult to say. Gohan has a nice, the most, the, the nicest damage output in my opinion. But uh, Goten is an orb changer, and he does type to rainbow, which is my second favorite. My favorite is type to type. But since he does do that, he can help you out if you like. I use him on my LR Broly team when I'm running the World Tournament. So if you guys are looking for something like that, definitely utilize him. He's definitely really good for that. Uh, the Gohan is definitely really good for an A or yeah, an A tier unit for hybrid Saiyan teams or for running a um, um, the mono agility team. And there's just so many better Super Saiyan Gokus. But if you want to, uh, he does the Sable Rampage and he gets key plus three attack and defense plus eighty percent, which is definitely not that bad. Uh, so I would probably go Gohan, Goten, then Goku, and then Kid Buu as my last in terms of those. But I, I still don't think you should choose any of them. Um, now moving over to the actual, well, I don't want to say useful units compared to them, but more useful units or the ones that you should consider. Um, Frieza, full, full power Frieza, mo a staple on a mono extreme physical team. Uh, he is part of the Namek Saga category and the full power Saga category, um, or the full po power category. Now the thing is, he doesn't have a lot of people who he links very well with. I mean, he does have the Golden Freeze and the Angel Golden Freeze that he links with, and he does some decent damage. He definitely does. Um, his his easy A gives him an additional defense plus thirty percent for three turns. Um, I don't think that warrants how awesome he is. Well, I mean, that's just on his a super attack. Um, he does get an additional thirty percent, key plus three and thirty percent as a first attacker in turn. It's still I don't think that warrants him to be so amazing because with that uh, Extreme Z Awakening, but he still does attack plus 120%, and uh, he, with that Easy A, his stats get nice buff. Uh, so he is still a very good unit, very viable unit. The thing is, chances of you actually running him on a team, most of the time you're only going to run him on a mono extreme team, um, 
and uh, maybe, maybe a full power team, depending on who you have. And honestly, there are better units that you could run on a full power team than the villain. Because full power team, while it's nice, uh, because you could run Frieza on it, chances are you're going to want to run your Super Saiyan 4s or even LR Broly at that point, you know, LR Gohan and stuff like that. But um, he's definitely a good unit. That's just something to keep in mind. Janemba over here. Now, I don't think you should get Janemba. I really don't. Uh, Janemba is uh, almost a staple. He's still an S-tier unit for a mono-extreme intelligence team. But that's it. Only on that team. His other, his newer unit that's over here, as you see over here, the two of them, they're, they're, they're spinning images of each other. Everything's, everything's pretty much the same, except for the intel, the strength one gets attack plus 80%. So that's awesome. So And he has a chance to dodge. So he just replaces him on any team that you could think of except for Mono Intelligence. And even so, because the original one does not do an attack buff, it doesn't matter. He, he's, he's good against everyone and he can dodge. You could still throw him on a Mono Intelligence team. The only thing that's going to take a hit is your health. Because his attack plus 80%, even though he's not going to be doing maybe not as much damage, he is still going to be doing a, a decent amount of damage, and he has a chance to dodge, so you're probably going to be better off running him over the Intelligence one on a Mono Intelligence team anyway. But that being said, if you don't have a Janemba, this, not, would, not, this would not be a bad choice either. Um, the other one is going to be the Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Now, he is a really good unit, okay? I'm not going to lie to you. He's, not, he's a really good unit. The only one that could replace him is the LR Super Saiyan 3 Goku, which we all know is very hard to pull an LR. Don't hunt LRs. Um, so, if you have LR Goku, just don't even consider this, it's not worth it. If you already have him, it can be useful. Um, I usually get a, him, the, the, you get a choice of the original ones too, for free. I don't know if they're doing that this year. Um, I, again, I don't think you should choose any of the OG leaders in my opinion. He does do a lot of damage though. He does do a lot of damage. Attack plus 120% for 7 turns at the start of the turn, plus he gives himself um, a defense of 70% just overall. He also gains immense damage if you can easy A him. And he's an overall really good unit. He hits for like two, 2 million or something like that when you have some dupe system fed into him on a really good mono agility team um, or Super Saiyan 3 team, something like that. He also fits into a lot of categories. Majin Buu Saga, Super Saiyan 3, Pure Saiyans, and Full Power. All of these categories also are very, very viable. So he is a staple. He's a very good unit. Um, again, it's very rare, very like rare that you're going to actually be able to pull the LR Super Saiyan 3 Goku. If you did, obviously, you know, I wouldn't think about it. But I think that this Goku is actually really, really good. I'm actually trying to make, compose a list of the order in which I would select while I'm going through this with you. Um, the next one is going to be the Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks over here. Now, I mean, both of these guys are really awesome, right? Um, I like them. They both have attack plus 120% up when performing super attack. But this guy gets, and the, the physical one gets an additional 60% and defense minus 30% for 7 turns from the start of the turn. So he gets um, 160 or 180 percent attack buff right now it's really up to you they both they, they both fit on the same categories honestly except um yeah actually they both fit on the same category fusions hybrid saiyans majin buu saga and super saiyan 3 category again like i said before these categories are some of the most relevant categories in game fusions definitely people still to this day run gogeta super saiyan 4 gogeta hybrid saiyans maybe not so many gohans out there but when you see them the, this guy is going to pretty much be a staple, or either of these guys are going to be a staple. Majin Buu Saga category is definitely something that you, I still see around, and Super Saiyan 3 is definitely a staple. Now, in terms of damage output, this the physical one outdamages the technique one, but honestly, even though the physical one does outdamage the technique one, I still think that they are kind of still interchangeable. Again, that's just my opinion on the matter. Um, if you don't have the physical one, uh, the, the technique one would not be that bad to choose. Um, it is a 70% leader, and honestly, I think that you should pick the 70% leader from these tickets over a uh, the OG leaders. But the OG leader is also easy A if you have a team to actually easy A them into a um, into a 70% leader. But um, yeah, this guy's really good. The only thing that he fits on that the other physical one doesn't is a mono uh, a technique team. And there are units that are replacing him. But he, since he does have that 120% attack buff, he is going to still stay relevant for a long time. And he's, I still see him run on teams today, even on, on the YouTubers, the bigger YouTubers that I watch. Uh, he's still relevant on those teams. So I think he is still a good choice. I would not knock him because he has a replacement. Um, the next is going to be the Super Gogeta. Now, I know a lot of you, oh man, this guy is available. Some people are like, oh man, I, I've been hunting him for years and never pulled him. He is still such a phenomenal unit. We have no idea if he is going to get an Extreme Z Awakening, and honestly, I don't know if he is. Um, if he does, he is a very, very good unit. He will be a better unit than he is now. The problem is, 
he has obviously the intelligence one that one ups him in every single way now only these guys are only available in the fusion category that's all that there is to it um his passive skill is a flat out 7,000 attack buff yes he is effective against all types which is awesome but that's about it that's the only thing he was really going for him he stayed in meta so long, he was in meta even at the 120 point, when we had the 120 leaders. And if you guys don't know, he was he was the end of the first like real meta, not the strike event meta. Um, he was like the first Dokken event metas. So he was the end of that. He made it through the 70% leaders. He made it through the wall, pretty much through a lot of the 120 leaders. And the problem now is that flat out buff killed him and he only does like 1 to 1.2 million damage, even on a 120 or a fusions team. They, the intelligence one just beats him out in every single category, and the problem with him also is, while he everyone still there's still so much hype behind it, he is replaceable on a strength team, a mono strength team now, because there are so many better units on for a mono strength team. I mean, the Super Saiyan God Goku is such an amazing unit. Obviously, Super Super Saiyan Four Goku with the Super Saiyan Three counterpart. Um, you have the Rage Vegeta with the counters. I mean, you, there's just so many. So many units for Mono Hero Strength that they just one up him now in every category. Um, plus, you gotta think about it. Plus, we have criticals now. So, and and Strength has a built-in crit. So, if you have dupe system, it's so much easier to out damage this guy when you get a crit. Uh, honestly, I I really like him, but personally, guys, I don't think you should put your stones into him or you get use your ticket on him because of the fact that he's just he's replaceable in every aspect on every team, no matter what. If you have that intelligence Gogeta, and remember we have, do have that purple ticket coming, so I don't think he's going to be with that. Well, I'm putting him at the end of the list if I do not get I saw. I'm sorry, it hurts me to say this because I do still really like that card, but I don't think it's worth it in my opinion. Um, this intelligence one definitely outshines him in every way, and again, that those mono strength teams, there's just so many better units. Um, last but not least is the Super Vegeta. Now, my personal opinion, I think this should be your number one card you go to. Now, let's just take a look, alright? This is the, the this uh, uh, Super Vegeta. He's part of the Majin Buu Saga category and the Patara category, right? Now you're saying, oh, well, hey, we have the physical Super Vegeta part of the same categories. Doesn't he replace him? Well, here's the thing, all right? Now, this Super Vegeta definitely out damages this Super Vegeta, right? Because he doesn't have that attack buff. When he gets attacked, he could increase his attack after he gets hit 10 times to do 100% damage output. And he increases himself and the allies' attacks by 30% for one turn. Same thing for this guy. The only thing is that I don't like, personally, it's my personal, personal opinion on the matter, is that he does damage reduction by 50%, while the intel while the agility one does 80%. Now, some of you may be saying, oh, it's only 30%, but here's the thing, all right? That means that there are certain situations where the agility one's going to be better than the physical one, because the physical one is not going to tank as much. This Super Vegito is still a staple on a mono agility team. And depending on the event, obviously you cannot bring him on a Majin Buu Saga category team because he's like the only leader. I mean, unless you use this um, uh, this actual strength overflowing SR power Vegito, which you're probably never going to use as a leader. Um, the only one he's not going to go on is the Majin Buu Saga category. So you only have Patara. Patara is the only category where these two cannot be on the same team together. And Patara category, I, again, my, my own opinion... I don't think I would ever really be running it. So you have this team over here. HP attack and defense plus 150%. Patara category is pretty cool. You have some good units. You also have the new LR Vegito that's coming out, and he's going to be a really good staple as well. Uh, HP and attack plus 170, defense plus 130%. He's going to be one of those leaders. Um, but, I mean, they, they definitely also do have some really good options to choose from, right? But if that's the only category that he outshines him in, or could potentially outshine him in, I'm sorry... Um, I think he's worth it. I personally still think he's worth it. He still has a lot of value. That damage reduction will help you get through so many events. Um, even Super Battle Road, he's definitely going to come in handy there. So, honestly, this is my number one choice for you guys. Um, if I didn't already have him rainbowed, I would probably, would probably choose him. Um, I think that that should be your, your best bet. So, in terms of who you should pick, in my opinion, we already said who you don't want to get. Super Vegito is going to be my number one choice. Um, oh, I'm sorry. You know what we also didn't mention? We never mentioned the Buhan. Um, so let me go ahead and pull up the Buhan real quick. Now, the thing is about Buhan, while I do like Buhan, uh, the unit, or, um, well, yeah, the unit as, uh, in the, in the character, um, I don't think you should choose him. Um, now, you're maybe saying, well, why, why wouldn't I choose, why wouldn't I choose him? Isn't he one of a kind? Yes, he is. He's one of a kind right now. Um, he is a really good unit. I like him. Uh, attack plus 12% and recovers HP. The problem is, with this guy now, 
and while he is a really decent unit he is part of the Majin Buu Saga category you can link him with the intelligence kid Buu if you want to um, he has some awesome super attacks and I mean immense damage across the board and he's a debilitator the problem with him is he his damage output is does not is not consistent anymore attack plus 12 percent per key orb is pretty awesome but that HP recovery doesn't do anything so at this point all this guy is is a semi nuker a 12 percent semi nuker none, nonetheless so he's not doing a lot of damage um, he, while he can debuff the enemy, which is awesome, it's just, he's not really meta. Uh, Majin Buu Saka category, you're running so many different units, uh, chances are you're never gonna run him on that team. If you do, hey, you know what, good for you. Um, but the only thing that he ever really comes into play at this point is on a mono extreme intelligence team. Um, and at that point, there's other units that you can run, um, on a mono hero intelligence team, or mono extreme intelligence team, I'm sorry, that, that, that will replace him. I mean, the only thing that he has going for him, again, like I said, is that his his, uh, that his debuffing and uh, his his nuclear ability, sort of. The HP recovery now, once you once you get on once you get on a 120 or higher team, 3,000 HP definitely doesn't do anything. If they gave him like 3% or 5% uh, HP recovery uh, per key orb obtained, then I could see it being a little bit more useful because then you could get like if, well 3%, then you could pretty much fill up almost the entire field to get 100% back uh, your HP. But I feel like they, that, that would have been a little bit more viable than just 3,000. Um, but anyway, guys, that's what I think. So um, in terms of who you should choose, let's do this in order. Um, again, Super Vegito number one. Number two, um, it's probably going to be the Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, my opinion again. Um, just because he's a 70% leader, uh, while the physical one can replace him, they both do some decent damage. Uh, the physical one definitely outdamages him by, I think, by like 500,000 on average. Uh, but at the same time, He's still a very viable unit, and you can bring him up against mono and uh, agility events. Uh, again, 70% lead, uh, which I'm going to have to say is going to be should take priority over your easy A unit. Now, with that being said, the easy A units can still out damage these guys as well. So, um, I personally think it, it, I'm going to have to make it maybe a tie, but uh, I'll just give just a little bit of a notch for the Super Saiyan 3 Go tanks because we have no idea if the 70% leaders are going to get an easy A at, at one point. But um, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, and then just under him is a Super Saiyan 3 Goku, because his EZA is freaking crazy phenomenal. Um, and then just just below that is going to be the full power Frieza, just because he is still a staple on a couple of teams. Um, the problem is he's not really part of that many categories that are going to be that viable. At least Super Saiyan 3 Goku has all the categories, as opposed to the Emperor Frieza, the full power Frieza. Um, and the same thing goes for the Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. So, like, these two are very, very close. Uh, and outside of that... Um, Honestly, any of these guys, um, if you don't, if you really, if you want to get the Gogeta just for nostalgia purposes because you don't have them or you always wanted them, I guess that would be cool. Again, like I said, the intelligence, the intelligence one replaces him on every single team, so I don't think he's that worth it. Plus, there's many strength units that will replace him on a mono strength team. Um, Janemba, same thing happens with his uh, strength unit, though he's still very good and a staple on a mono intelligence team. And again, movie boss is the only category he's on, so it's not really that worth it. Um, just because th th that category, you're going to use a strength one. Uh, and outside of that, then Buhan again, the same thing. Um, so, yeah, definitely these, these four are going to be your top picks, and, Go and Vegito is definitely going to be my number one suggestion if you don't have him. But anyway, guys, that's it. I know it was a very long-winded video. I tried to keep it shorter. Um, but yes, I, I again, Super Vegito, probably my number one pick for all of them. Um, also, keep in mind, and I know I um, I didn't really say, I don't know if I said this earlier in the video when it came down to... The, um, the the actual Gohan and the the Goku, these guys over here, this Goku, Gohan, and Goten, they did have their own packs that you can buy um, from the from the Pilafs Trove. Well, it should be from the Pilafs Trove. Um, that's going to be available, so you can go ahead and select that. Plus, I think you get one free ticket when they get their Extreme Z Awakening on Global, so that way you could actually select them. So that's another reason why I didn't think they were worth it. But anyway, guys, that's it. Thank you for joining me here today. I hope that was helpful and informative to you. Let me know what you ended up picking if you already uh, selected them, and let me know if this was helpful or if you disagreed with me and why. But anyway, guys, thank you. I'll catch you all later. Peace.